This is Deborah Tavares reporting live in Santa Rosa. Uh, this is September the 8th, 2018. We are filming the people that lost their homes during the fire that raged through here October 8th for several weeks. There are huge encampments of homeless people as a result of unable to have housing. We're here on the last day of uh, probably 50 motorhomes, as you can kind of see the idea here of the motorhomes. This lined this entire area. The uh, San city of Santa Rosa has now forced removal of these folks. They're having to move continuously. They're not allowed any specific place to be. It's very unsafe on the streets. And if they don't move out by tomorrow, many have already moved out. We're seeing uh, lots of vacancy along the road here where there are piles of uh, people's um, possessions because they have to leave by tonight. I think it's tonight. So I'm standing here talking to uh, someone that was burned out, lost their home as a result of the fires, and has not been able to afford um, or to even find uh, an apartment to live in. So uh, we're going to just get some questions answered about the difficulty of living in these circumstances. So about how many people, how long have you been in this area? Um, about three months. So you've been parked here for about three months. Yeah. And uh, about how two many? Two to three months. Yeah. Two to three months. About how many people do you think? Uh, this is called the corporate parkway okay. in Santa Rosa. Yeah. About how many people total do you think are here? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Where the camp? Where are you? I'm not sure exactly, but there was a lot of trailers. There had to be at least like, I want to say at least a good thirty trailers over here that I've seen. So 30 trailers. So yeah, and that isn't, there's probably a lot of people in those trailers too. Okay. So, and these are mostly, from your understanding, people that are victims of the fire. Yeah, and, and there's no affordable housing, there's no rentals. Yeah, exactly. There's nowhere to live. Exactly. So people are doing the next best thing, and that's living in an RV. Yeah. Okay, so I'm understanding that this corporate park, uh, that Catholic Charities was providing showers. Yeah. No. Okay. That was the mission. Oh, the mission. Catholic Charities doesn't have showers anymore or safe parking. Okay. The Would you like to stand here and contribute to the conversation? I don't like the on camera. You don't? I'm you, not on camera. I'm on... behind the camera person. I worked for Sundance for 18 years. Okay, we won't put you on the camera. So if you want to just stand where this. Yeah, this, this camp has leader. a lot more things going on than people think. These are, these either, are people either. from like five other camps that got busted and ran into this camp. Okay, so, so we need. Out the other okay, camp. so put it on pause for a second. Okay. And we're talking to a number of victims of the fires and circumstances of the inability for housing here in the Santa Rosa, uh, Sonoma County area. Uh, dozens, dozens, hundreds of people, thousands of people have lost their homes and have been displaced. There's uh, questions as far as where are all the missing people. Certainly we know some very luxurious areas here in the county burned to the ground, Fountain Grove, being one of those areas. Um, we know total that there are about 5,300 homes that, that were destroyed. In the entire area of the night of the fires that started in on October 8th of 2017, uh, in many different counties here, over 8,000 structures combining uh, commercial and residential were lost. Right now as we speak, we're going to pan the horizon uh, going this way. We're in a corporate car uh, park center right now where Many of the homeless people, as a result of the fires, have had to seek a safe haven. Uh, there are RVs parked here. I'm understanding that there are different organizations that have been providing um, uh, toilet facilities. No. no, no toilet facilities. Okay, fill us in on they, what they is happening here. They shut all the here. toilets nearby that were public. So there, was this, there were bathrooms at um, Kaiser and the welfare office. They shut immediately as the tent people started to arrive. They busted out some of the, the encampments that were in the middle of town and they brought came over into this camp that was already just RVs and cars. And so they shut all the bathrooms down. And then, um, so there was probably about 125, a maximum 136 when we did the BC census. Here, at one time, there was about 120 some odd people here, a combination of RVs and tents. RVs, tents, and a lot of cars. 
and a lot of people cars. living in their cars. Right. And they leave in the mornings. So you don't see them in the middle of the day. They'll be here dark. If so, here. so is your <coughs> understanding of why this has occurred at, to the extent that it has as a result of the displacement of the uh, inability to get housing because of the cost as a result of the fires. Some people did lose their job because of fires, some people can't get jobs because of fires, some people lost their housing because of fires, but also um, there's a whole lot of people who've been evicted, so I'm, I'm, I know of people from all different agencies, as because they wanted increased. to get rid of this low rent person or section 8 person and rent it to somebody for a larger amount of money because there's such a housing shortage, they're going to get temporary renters. Okay, so so let me address that. There has been a state mandate where, uh, as a result of the fires, there's a rental increase cap. So apartment owners are unable to increase the rent uh, beyond a certain percentage. However, that's not um, allowing people that have been here that have had jobs to stay in housing. Certainly we've seen a significant increase in rents, uh, even for the people that are barely hanging on. What we're, what we're witnessing here, as I'm standing here Saturday, is the evening that all of the remaining RVs and tents are to be removed because tomorrow they will be forcibly... It's way earlier than they said, too. This should be, should be said that they said that they were going to uh, offer them an RV park in the public meetings and in the paper and on the radio by the 15th, and there was nothing like that given to them as an option. They said they're going to crush their RVs down by the next day. They gave them one hour to get out, most of them. So the people you see here now are either delinquent or were not here at the time of the notice. Or but the RVs they, are broken down they, and they, they can't they gave move abatements. out. They did not give any warning. Abatement means I could come take it right now and tow it. And then they gave the people in tents one hour, which is not really human. That's not humane. We're, we're hearing the consequences of devastating weaponized warfare being perpetrated not only in the United States but across the globe. We know that the fires were an execution as a, re as a result of Rothschild. Pacific Gas and Electric is Rothschild. We know that as a result of the intercepted uh, emails that we have on YouTube, uh, the YouTube entitled, Plan to Burn Up Northern California. Well, now you're seeing the consequences of the aftermath of the plan to burn up Northern California. As I stand here today giving you this report, I am able to look at the horizon and I can see the smoke that is as a result of fires that are burning out of control right now a few hours north of us. The main freeway that um, traverses through Central California on up to Oregon has been shut down in both directions. In fact, two days ago, people were forced to evacuate their cars. They couldn't move and they had to run. They were being told to run. Just as what we saw in Greece, the roads were clogged, the people were burned alive in their vehicles. Many of those people had to, of course, evacuate into the ocean. This is happening in Sweden, this is happening in Greece, this is happening in Finland, this is happening in California, Oregon, Washington, because of the proverbial large-scale weaponization of the weather. And uh, sadly, we're seeing victims of crimes against humanity. We're seeing the uh, consequences of inhumane treatment to good and decent people that should not be put in this position. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Because living like this has been tough. Uh, what would you say is the toughest aspect of this in your experience in these conditions? Um, I would say just having to move all the time and not really being settled at all since the fire happened. So being continuously displaced? Yeah, exactly. Okay, do you have a core group of people that you are traveling with for safety purposes? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you're trying to stay in groups? Yeah, exactly. Okay, what are the police telling you? Are they um, compassionate towards the circumstances or are they uh, having oh, to... Oh no, they look at us like we're a joke. Like we're disposable. Okay. Yeah, they don't care. So what are some of the kinds of things that um, that treatment has looked like. What have what have you seen? As in what? Uh, law enforcement uh, coming around here. They just come over here and start kicking stuff around and 
say Now, when that. you mean kicking stuff around, exactly what do you mean? Um, like, well, there was tents up, and they'll uh, start kicking them to, hey, hey, you know, who's in there? And start banging on the doors, and, you know? Oh, okay. Okay. So what pretty would they... Pretty much like we're, like, we're doing something wrong, pretty much. Trying to survive. Exactly. How are most of the people here getting food? Um, I don't, I don't even know, to be honest. I... I have a EBT um, food stamps, mm -hmm. so that's how I've been getting by, but it's not much. What about water? Sometimes we uh, get the jugs and try to fill them up where we can get water from, any faucet or whatever. Do you know what's going to happen to you when you leave here tonight, when you're forced to leave here tonight? No, I'm not, we're not even sure where we're going yet. We and yet you have to leave? Yeah. We have to find a spot. What is the deadline for the uh, required? Well, they already came today and told us that we, well, earlier today they said that we had three hours. So we, there's no way we could get all this stuff out in three hours. This trailer needs a so we're trying to fix it right now. So right now, it's important to understand that Santa Rosa is having its 150th uh, celebration today in the Courtyard Square. So while festivities and joy and happiness is occurring there in a massive uh, display of celebration, we have real life happening here. We have people that have to move, being forced to move where they don't know where they're going. So I want to say to all of you that are listening, uh, we're in trouble. The only way that all of us are going to survive what is happening is that you must speak up. Your silence is your permission for this kind of inhumane treatment to continue to exist and expand. The homeless community here in Northern California has doubled or tripled since the fires. And there have been many people that have just left. We don't even know where many people have gone. But this area is decimated. And there continues to be fires as we become targeted further. So stay in touch with StopTheCrime.net. Please look at our YouTube channel frequently as we will be updating you on crimes. Again, this is Deborah Tavares reporting for StopTheCrime.net on the scene of another crime. Watching the last remnants of the people that have been forced out of housing, and um, we're seeing how people live when they're on the edge. Now, what you're seeing here are where play, uh, motorhomes and RVs were parked. There were lots of tents. We just heard back there that there were somewhere around 130 people. Uh, well, I should say 130 tents and RVs and hundreds and hundreds of people here for uh, three, about three months. Most there, of them have left now. Most have left, so we're seeing areas that have been vacated. We're seeing remnants of people that were here. We can see piles of, of their um, trash, etc. because of course there was no trash provided here. And um, so it certainly did become a problem. But um, we're watching the displacement of America. We're watching the displacement of people that were living in an area that um, doing? has been devastated. We're going to back up. We're going to talk to this fellow. We're going to see what his circumstances were as we film ahead of us. So what are... Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Can I can I record your voice but not your body? Okay, excuse me. Can I record what you're saying but not record your face? I don't care. You don't care. No. Okay. No, let's get us, if it's okay with them, we'll. Then we're going to film you if you don't mind. I don't. I don't mind. Okay. I I want to ask you a few questions. Sure. Go on. Okay. So, 
We're here at the corporate uh, center here in uh, Santa Rosa. We're, we're here uh, where people have been camped in RVs and tents for a number of months. There have been a variety of charities that have brought in some toilets and some washing facilities. Is that true? Uh, they have talked about bringing stuff in, but they have not brought in porta potties or anything like that, ma'am. I worked at Kaiser. Okay. I, I, I was there for the last seven months. I'm a union laborer. Okay. And uh, the only time my trailer was broken into was while I was working for them, and I think it was my co workers. You know, okay, so what is your experience here? Are the majority of people that are here as a result of the fires and the lack of affordable housing? No. Why are they here? What is the main reason? Just because they got no, because they have nowhere else to go. Of course. No. And rents are too high, there, and no one can afford rents. Well, and we figure we're not bothering anybody because at nighttime and weekends, there's nobody here, so. So what what we this is is this is a property. corporate facility of right. weekday jobs. Right, and I actually know a couple of the ladies that work right across from where we're standing. You know, we don't go on and, their properties. Uh, and so you know, they but, sought but like, a, a but place. Like, but they've had like syringes and all kinds of stuff turn up on their property. And I'm telling you, it's not me. And, right. And I'm not going to point fingers at anyone. You know, but when people do get down and out. Then yeah, I can't speak for other well, people, yeah, but yeah. most people respect. Yeah. I well, this this her. is Sonoma County. We sure. are known for our drugs. Well, yeah, um, well, drugs all of our, our like beer point. and wine yeah. and all of this. I was and I want to just no. make a note right here behind us. See we're her. seeing a chemtrail. Can you get this chemtrail in the frame? Oh yeah. So we're seeing smoke on the horizon from the fires that are burning out of control, and we're now seeing a fire truck passing by right now. <laughs> this is. Um, Probably uh, getting set up, maybe, um, or a form of harassment. No, they no they 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 cruise around because uh, they're practicing since Kaiser opened and stuff. They made sure that no cars are parked on this side of the street, so they have total access in case something does happen at Kaiser. Uh, I actually uh, know the fire marshal out of Monterio, the building, and down at the corner of, um, of uh, Mercury Way, where, where it tees into this street. That's a county building. There. So now let me ask you, you're being required to abandon this area tonight. Correct. What is the time, the deadline? I don't know what deadlines. I've actually removed my trailer from this street. Okay, so are you in an area where you have friends so that you're not isolated no, and I've, alone? No, I've, I've isolated myself. I've gotten away from other people. Okay, personally. well, I would recommend, uh, it's extremely important because we're seeing mass refugees. You're a climate victim refugee. That's what you are. Well, there's that too. Yeah. And and it's happening worldwide. Yes. For yeah. many reasons. Yes. And Global so, warming, which is they've been in denial from. They did some core samples off a drill. Well, we won't, we won't <laughs> discuss that. I but what we have conversations but, with people. It's not about race. So turn it class. off. It's class. Howdy, how yeah. are you? What's up? Well, we got to record someone barbecuing. Oh. Not over here. How do you clean up the area? Where are you folks? Huh? Where are you folks? We're here. Well, I mean, so, yeah, I'm wondering why you're doing huh? They're interviewing us. Okay. Uh, we barbecued yesterday, but that was yesterday. Oh, it's fine to barbecue. It's long as you're doing like a yeah. Yeah. That was yesterday, it's not today. I don't know. Oh, somebody's just a bunch of stories. What we do? I don't have smoke. Hey, the personal friend of uh, of uh, what's his name? The Mario Fire Department. I think it's me. What's What's the status of the fire up north? Is it which one? <laughs> yeah, which one? Uh, the one uh, beyond Shasta. Is the road still shut down? As far as I know, yeah. Yeah. There's a new one there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a new one there. Yes. Yeah. 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 How many active fires do we have? I don't know. <laughs> Who are you folks with? Uh, where was Stop the Crime? Um, yeah, I don't know how many fires go on. Okay. Okay. The one started very S and the one in Shasta. Well, stay safe. You guys are on the front line. Very dangerous. Right. Okay. I hope she is able to get over the mountain. I think we're, 
you're okay getting home. Yeah. So yeah, she gonna good. come and help you tomorrow? Or uh, she she's just it? coming to visit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, we're gonna cut it for the moment here. So yeah, my give question you is, we've been together like 12 years. We've been able to, you know, support ourselves. How did you end up here? Just because in the last two years it's gotten extremely expensive and just we haven't been able to be responsible for ourselves anymore. So when you mean you haven't been able to be responsible, let's break that down for people that are going to be Normal listening to this. Like you can't afford nor housing. Right. Because the jobs aren't paying enough money. Right. Okay. And that's even if you can get hired, if you don't have a car and a driver's license and insurance, you know, or just like there's always something in the way of, you know, unless you have a lot of money already, kind of, it's like you have to have money to make money in a weird way, it seems like. So you're being held down because yeah. of the circumstances yeah. that are prevailing now in the United yeah. States. And even are, if you are you seeing money, are you seeing a growing number of people your age yes, in the 30s that are ending up in these I circumstances? Yes, I couldn't believe when we first became homeless, we actually had a car of our own, and we were driving over by Cotting Town, and I start noticing all these people my age and younger with bags, and I'm like, and this is before the fires. I'm like, everyone's homeless right now. I was in shock. I don't know where it came from. It just seemed sudden. So where are people ending up? From your perspective, do you have an idea of really where people don't are going? Know. I don't. Are I they mean, just disappearing? There's a few people that have, you know, managed to climb up and get out. Few. I've, I've, I've got money to pay rent. Who's going to rent to someone who has an old antique airstream? You know, you got to be off the grid, basically. I want to go back to work. I've heard of a I lot of people getting sick and dying. Um, oh, yeah. Talk to me about that. So you've heard about people getting sick Random and dying. Random heart conditions where here. people were healthy. Yeah, here in Sonoma County, people mm -hmm. were healthy and just suddenly, you know. Last week, oh, Jennifer isn't dead. It's okay. a different Jennifer. That's good. Um, no, I just heard some other guy had a heart attack. Um, how old are uh, How old are these people? In the um, late thirties, forties, fifties. Okay, where like 30s where where are these heart attacks occurring? Here in the camps? Or? Uh, no, not here in the camp. I don't know the exact location. It's called the S turn. I guess there's been a few people who have had um, some kind of a heart attack in that area. Where's the um, S turn? Yeah. I don't know where that is exactly, but. I could ask somebody and find out. Anyways, yeah, there's that. And then my friend, she said after the fires, she was always healthy. She's in her early 40s. Suddenly, she's got a huge heart condition. Um, I think it's, uh, what does Amber have? Uh, the oh, congest congestive, congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure. Yeah, she's got congestive heart failure out of nowhere after the fires. And she's worried I, she I has six months. Okay, you know? so are you aware that there have been many reports of older people dying after the fires? from heart related and lung related issues because I, I of this it. of the toxins in the smoke sure, yeah. sure. and the poisons. But it seems abnormally yeah. high to me. It is. Yeah, because because those buildings burning are so toxic. And that's right. And there's been tons of people from all over the state who've come in to clean and do, you know, professional cleaning for after the fires in They tons trained of they trained me for that. It was a one week. So now wait. From out of state, you're observing people coming no, no, in. No, no, no. It was, did I hear you say no, out of state? All over the state. Yeah. Oh, They're, but out of the county, they're having a lot of people come from out of the county. And to what come are they doing? Work. Professional cleaning for, for for cleaning up the homes that have uh, smoke schools, damage. Schools, buildings, apartments, yeah. homes. Kaiser all of the went above. through a big process. So have you been up. able to uh, get work through that? Or? No, that's what I mean. They're hiring people from elsewhere oh. and having them come in. Okay. I know it's, one person locally that has been able to actually have their business this is, grow from it. Okay. This is, this, this, is, this is what they have to have. But that's only one. So in order to get employment, what you're saying is you've got to have um, identification. You have oh, to yeah. have this. This is what you have to have. Some kind that's, of certification. That certification. That's a one week long training course. Okay. So this one. says laborers training and retraining trust fund. For Northern California, right, but does, does certification of worker, certification of worker on hazardous waste operation, mm -hmm. forty hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, forty hour class. So there is a certification program that you go through Correct. in order to train for toxic removal after the fires. Is Correct. that what I'm understanding? That's, that, that's what. I okay, I was observing after the cleanup when FEMA was here over um, 
over excavating the lots, removing mm -hmm. too much soil, yeah. mm -hmm. that they were not even wearing any type of protection. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were wearing some of the hazmat clothes, right. but I saw nothing in protecting their breathing. It's called the Tyvek suit. And uh, Tyvek, yeah, Tyvek, Tyvek, yeah. And I saw nothing with protection. Now we're breathing toxins now. Mm -hmm. um, we've been heavily chemtrailed today. Mm -hmm. We have fires up north. Mm -hmm. Now what we've been observing is the heavy chemtrailing is holding all of the toxins down low so that we are essentially being basted well, in these poisons. We had an inversion yeah. of the of the of the air where where okay, for like we had this cool cut, spell cut it. and inverted the final day uh, when these homeless people largely as a result of the economy here in northern California and because of the fires are to vacate forcibly. There are many reasons why uh, some of the people are stuck car keys have been stolen, their RVs have broken down, and tonight, if they're not vacated, uh, their property is going to be confiscated and their RVs are going to be crushed. That's what they've been told. Now, these uh, people don't know where they're going. There are no jobs. Everywhere you can look here, you can see the RVs, but we're at the very last day when the majority of RVs have already been removed. They're traveling in groups so that they're safe. This is USA Inc. This is what is happening here in our country. We are being shredded by the economic hitman team. And this is an example of what weaponized targeting does to people when they're burned out of their homes. This is what it looks like when you're living on the edge, barely able to afford an apartment, and when other people's homes burn down and owners have moved in to the apartments to find a place to live. This is what this looks like. This is, this is, this is what they certainly think and are concerned that we're just watching their despair, but we're in their despair. We feel their despair. Again, we're being chemtrailed. In the United States, Inc. This is Deborah Tavares reporting live in Northern California after the fires. I'm going to make another loop here. Let's so take one final look because these places will be gone tomorrow. They will be a toad. Corporate center. This is again in the So are you ready? I'm recording. Okay, so I want everyone to notice what a small cell deployment looks like on Pacific Gas and Electric wooden power pole. You're seeing the equipment uh, attached down below and at the very top, you're seeing an antenna. 
this is what the small cells look like. This is being deployed all over Santa Rosa and in Northern California. Particularly in areas that were hard hit with the fires, people are not around and they're able to do this. In fact, uh, we're going to uh, show uh, you more of these so that those of you that do not yet have the small cells being deployed or are wondering what they're looking like, we're going to show you. So um, we're on our way to another point of deployment where we've seen multiple cells.